Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that bell if you're on YouTube and there's the tip jar. So <laughs> you have to use PayPal to get into there, okay? So use PayPal and scan it through that app and then it'll take you right to the tip jar if you, need, if you would like to leave a tip. My name is G.S. Bailey and I do military style drills. And I want to begin today because we're going into visuals and the visual editor, which also means the labeling tool. And there we go. Now, <clears throat> the, what I did, what I did was I went into Pyware itself and uh, brought up, there is a symbol key in there in the visual editor. I verified this. Every single piece on this picture right here was verified by me because I sat down with a single dot on that field and typed every single letter, upper and lower case, and every single number and every single symbol. And this was what I came out with, okay? Some do not have anything by them like a Barry Sachs or, sim or symbols, strangely enough, okay? <clears throat> strangely enough, in version 11, symbols did not. And I always thought that was the letter Y, a capital Y, it, I thought it used to be, but I, I may be wrong and I may be remembering this wrong, but this was what happened when I typed everything out, upper and lower, any number, any uh, modifier key, the only thing I could did not do is use a non-English uh, uh, use a non-English character. Okay, so this will this will be what it will translate into. This is a lowercase w, by the way. When I tried a capital W, it didn't do a thing. It stayed on my it stayed on what meant to U, so it'd be U. It stayed on a sousaphone, which means it really didn't do anything. Okay, now. If you use a quotation mark, they're not going to hold a thing. Nothing. It clears everything out for some reason. I don't know why that is, but I wanted to show that off to you first. I will make this publicly available in both the Pyware user group and in the drill design group. So don't worry if you didn't get a chance to screenshot that. You can always rewind. Yeah, you can. And then take a screenshot that way. You are correct. So off we go into Pyware for real, real. Now I'm going to show you the label tool and kind of what it can do. And also I'm going to start off by making a line. And you see here, they are not in my red and white uniform. All right, so I want to make them hold a flute for the moment. So I'm going to type in an F. I always make capitals when I do this stuff. So a capital F, you can also make a lowercase f if you'd like for a flute. And there they go. They're all holding a flute. Yay, you see them. And they have their arms like that ready, ready to go. Actually, I have to go like this because they're mirrored. I can't do that mirrored very well like I, do, like I can there, okay? Uh, <laughs> it's the mirroring that gets me every single time, doesn't it? But you see, they're holding a flute. If I highlight them, and change the label. Now, I'm gonna change just one of them. Oopsie on me. Let's say they were supposed to be clarinets. Let's pretend all five. Let's pretend that one of my flutes is supposed to be a clarinet. I made a boo-boo. All right, so you see where that's highlighted here, the red dot. Let's change that one to a clarinet, a C or a lowercase C or a lowercase L. And there they go. You see now they're holding a clarinet, which you can't see very well against the dark uniform. But to change them all, let's say I made a really big boo-boo and they all got to be clarinets. I hit the repeat symbol, click repeat symbol, I, and then hit accept, and then they change all into clarinets. But now I'm going to change them all into just a generic X right now. Let's just change, I'm going to change them all to a generic X once again. Highlight them all, and now I'm going to go, instead of to labeling, I'm going to come down here to the visual editor. This is how you can also do this if you wanna keep them all as an X. Okay, so, oh, oopsie, didn't wanna prop. So instead of a wood one, let's just say, um, let's just say I really screwed up. They're supposed to be all be bass clarinets, right? There they go, five bass clarinets. There is no symbol that I know of or a bass clarinet either. It's the same problem with a Barry saxophone, a baritone sax. That's just the way it is. There is no key for that right now. Um, to change the uniform, you're gonna come over here in this column. It says fabric. 
And right now it says don't change. We're going to change this. So I'm going to change to my military red person because I go so far back when I do a video that you're not going to notice who's who. And red, white, Shaco. There we go. Now they're dressed up. Now they're dressed up in my in, in a red and white uniform. So they'll never see you bleed. That's right. See, now look, because when I go this far back, because when I do a video, when I do a video recording, I'm trying to get the entire group as much, as much, if not everybody, as possible. Usually right there is the best possible spot for me to do if I go to the edge of this red, okay? If I go to the edge of the red down here. <clears throat> but I'm not videoing today, so I wanted to stay kind of up close so you can see what's going on. Now, facing, it's a military band. They default to facing the fixed direction, which is downward. There's a way that you, know, you at least used to be able to do this if I go under here to the file menu. And I believe it's under either document or application options that it used to be. But uh, just to make sure you get it, we follow the direction of the movement. Okay, Mo most if not every single time, you're going to have them follow the direction of the movement. But I'm gonna keep it at face of fix for one second. All right, so let's try this. So I'm gonna make some page tabs. Go ahead and follow me at home. Keep the window open. We're gonna do a zero and an eight just to show you what's going on. Oh, I, I forgot I kept that window open. Okay, so kaboom. I don't know why those markers decide to do that to me. My red and yellow markers do that to me all the time. So. You'll remember on visual editor, we have them facing a fixed direction at all times. I'm going to have them move back by eight counts. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And hit accept. Now, don't worry yet. Don't worry yet. They're going to backward march, okay, which we don't normally do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There may actually be a moment where you may have to do that. Instead, we made an oopsie, okay? We are following, supposed to follow the direction of the movement. So hit that, hit apply. Now watch what happens. Boom. They did a to the rear and went back eight counts. Now, <clears throat> Let's make one more. Let's make another deal. And again, this uh, you'll see uh, if I have them go a different direction, we'll make a new tab at 16. Ready? So at 16, we'll have them go over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Now we made from zero to 16, a quick count there, just to make sure they're not going to do this. Follow the direction of the movement, exactly what I needed them to do. So take a look at what happens now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then they're going to turn three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there you go. They followed the direction of the movement at all times. This is what happens. This is core band stuff. If you have them face a fixed direction all the time. Remember, we're in the military band world. We're not afraid to show you our backs. We are so totally not afraid to show you our backs. So let's follow the direction of the movement, apply, and do it one more time, just to make sure it's stuck, because sometimes I've messed with the visual editor a little too often. And sometimes when you do that, it will, they'll get what I call wiggly butt syndrome. Now, <clears throat> Let's say if I do one more, uh, do count 24, right? But I'm not going to have them move. I am not going to have them move here. There we go. And let me bring that back up. So you see here, they're just regular marking time. Let's make some, let's make a visual. But it's not going to be in this, okay? Uh-uh. If I have, this is how I usually cheat and do a quote unquote high mark time. I switch them over to high step for that one tap. Okay, now watch what they're going to do now. 
They're going to do a chair step high mark time in my visual. Let me move it over this way so you can see them a little better, so you can see their legs a bit better there. This is how I cheat and have them do a high mark time. And it's a chair step. If you do pointed toe high mark time, you just have to explain in a text box, pointed toe high mark time. There are differences. One day I'm gonna to have to use my phone and actually make a video video of the differences between a chair step high mark and a pointed toe high mark. There's a tiny bit of difference. Now, if I come here to visual menu, there's not very many deals that we do here. One is horns up and horns down. I, you know, the way I have them do a snap up, snap down is with this menu. And I make him snap it up on the count they're supposed to and snap back down at the very end. Sometimes you may wanna have them hit the press box. You see, they go up a little bit because now they're aiming it up toward the press box. <clears throat> now, the rest of these are more or less core band. And here's T-Pose, my absolute, our absolute favorite <laughs> because you, this will haunt you. This, the T-Pose <laughs> will haunt you. This is a, <laughs> it happened to me too. And I made, and I poked and ha ha everybody when it happened to them. They won't hold an instrument or anything. They're just going to be T-Posed out like this, okay? And what happens is Pyware's visual panicked. And what it does when it panics, it defaults like a video game to the T pose. It happened to me once. And I said, well, you know what? I can't do, I'm not, I can't do this. Uh, let me go back to a horns up. Come on now, give me horns up, apply changes. Now, <laughs> it happened to me too. And it panicked. So it went to the T pose. I made a, I made a post about it one day saying, well, um, I can't. I made fun of you all. I laughed at you all for this. And it finally happened to me. And they all laughed at me too. They all laughed at me. Sorry, y'all. Okay, so let me come back here because um, many, many a time, instead of a berry sax, I'm going to go here. I'm going to have them become a rifle. Okay, rifle one. So apply changes, oopsie, I think back at count zero, they're gonna stay as a Barry Sachs, aren't they? Uh -oh. So I know, hold on, yeah, it's telling me there's a bridge. No, I want you to be a rifle all that time. Be a rifle, come on now, be a rifle. Guard, be a rifle, be a rifle. There you go. Now let's make sure that they are going to stay a rifle the entire time. Make sure because it loves to mess with me. Follow the direction of the movement. I'm going to make sure it's a standard step the entire time, the, those 16 counts. Because remember, I changed that into a high step to simulate a high mark time. Now, <clears throat> with this, this is where if you have rifles out or, or flags, I prefer. I prefer rifles. I'm sorry, I do. Or a saber. Uh, you may have sabers. Uh, you know, I'm not above, I wouldn't be above having an, a neat little saber line. Maybe I'll do that in the next demo instead of rifles even. Um, but this is where, this is where, aha, there we go. This is where I get all my tricks from when I go and do a demo, when I video a demo and have it going through, I'm, I have my rifles doing certain things. It's all from this menu, every last one of them, except I usually have them do a right shoulder at count zero because that's their, I usually have them as their attention. Okay, so let's say for the eight, these eight counts, when they go backward, we're gonna spin. Let's spin. I don't know, what are we gonna do over this way? I have no idea. I don't wanna do a toss while they're moving. That's a little, too um a little too much why don't we do a figure eight maybe and we'll take eight counts Let's take eight counts to move it okay and then this last one because they're high mark timing i don't want to have them do anything there because 
they're doing a chair step high mark or a pointed toe high mark. And if you do that, we're trying to spin a rifle, you're gonna wham right into your knee. That will hurt. All right, so let's see what happens. Ready? Regular spin, but I have them facing the direction of the movement, okay? I probably wouldn't wanna have them doing, doing that and spinning while facing away from the audience. Probably not. Any core band judge is going to absolutely kill you over that. But that's the basics of it. You, um, there's performer props, which I don't tend to use. If I'm going to have a pit, there's going to be a pit and it's going to be stuck. All right. And again, the march style and pace, you can play around with that. I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to make you really laugh. They're going to do it in baby crawl now. I mean, if you really want to go crazy, you know, do a baby crawl or army crawl. I once redid this, at the, the whole diamond drill, because uh, I once did it and selected, I think, army crawl, because they were on their stomach and that they crawled through. They looked like a bunch of fish in a school swimming back and forth through the diamond. Um, so, you know, you can play around and mess around with that a little bit, um, <clears throat> you know, and make sure that you have everything labeled correctly before you roll, okay? So play around with that editor and play around with the visual editor. And the next time that we meet, we will be doing pinwheels done right, okay? Because you have to jump into that visual editor in order to hit a pinwheel, especially a stationary pivot. Stationary pivot takes a whole lot of work in that visual editor because you're dealing with facings the entire way through with your stationary person. The rest of them are fine because they're going to follow the direction of the movement no matter what and pinwheel into that spot. But your one stationary pivot's got to do some magic in order to do it, and that's in the visual editor which we will do the next time. And we'll also hit the parade gate tool and I will show you the differences between rotate and to do a rotate versus the parade gate. Okay, so happy drilling, have some fun today. <laughs> Make a diamond drill and have them do it in army crawl. You will love it. You'll laugh and laugh and laugh for the rest of the day over that. So until then guys, and ladies and gentlemen, happy drilling and have a great day. Bye, everybody.